everybody, welcome back for another video for our Trust to Process speaker series. Uh, you've guys seen Ian Warner Sr. before, uh, my strength and conditioning coach. Um, so what Ian does is actually he's in a very unique spot where not only has he coached high level athletes, uh, pros, Olympians, um, helped them basically from junior to those levels, he's also the father of two Olympic sprinters. Um, so, so I think Ian has a really cool perspective of not only from the coaching side but also from a parenting side, so so there's so many kids playing sports out there. Um, every parent wants the best for their kids, um, but so I think it'd be very nice for Ian to share his experiences, um, how him and his wife did it to help his kids, you know, give them the best chance of succeeding. So so maybe Ian, Ian will just introduce what his kids did, you know, how they are, how how you guys did it, and we'll just go from there, kind of thing. Um, so my uh, my eldest is 31, and youngest be 29 at this point. Um, they ended the their professional careers as, as track athletes. Um, initially, it started off when they were young um, playing football. And uh, I knew uh, one of the football coaches had a brother who actually um, coached track and field. So we thought, you know what, they want to get faster for, for football. Um, let's, let's do it. So it kind of ended up they simultaneously played football and ran track and football um, there was the only conflict with football was towards the high school age where they now played in the summer as opposed to fall ball and um, then they couldn't play at that point but they ended up playing high school football um, I think uh, the what I see generally outside right now are kids starting real young at sports but they stick to the one sport whereas um, you know, you should allow the individual or child to play as many sports as possible, because that way they develop, you know, a huge movement skills that will translate or transfer later on. But um, I, you know, one of my mentors, uh, Chris Dawson at CSI, he used to, um, I guess, test the New Jersey Devil prospects, and there was a couple of players. If I named some of the players, he's like, okay, I know that guy, but but you saw who the athletes were. If I named them, you'd know. But the athletes, you know, out of 30 people, there might have been four athletes that they can do anything, catch, run, like... It was out of the 40 people. Out of the 40 people, right? Now, the others, like, you look at them, like, well, wait a minute. Right? But know, they were, like, playing But the they NHL, could skate. Basically. They yeah. could play, <laughs> right? But that's the movement skill thing. So the athletes, they were the better prospects, in a sense. So, you know, you, you, there's that big argument about multi-sport or multi, mm -hmm. you know, a multi-discipline. Um, I still think it comes down to the person who's able to do more things will be the better athlete and, and you know, be more successful when they decide. And that's the thing. They, do, they need to decide, okay, now I'm going to specialize in this, you know, usually around the high school level. You're right. starting to think, okay, what am I going to do? Your kids decided on track. Well, it, it, it was one, well, <laughs> it was funny. Um, my wife and I both ran track and... She loved track. She preferred the track side. I wanted the football side, right? right. <laughs> you know, now having coached uh, um, some football players, having coached football and then seeing the football players now and the quality of the life at the end, it, it's, it's a different story. Right. You make money, but I tell you, the injuries and the issues that you have, it's like, so, you know, it's kind of a blessing in disguise, you know, unless you're, you know, the top of that on the track. Right. It's, it's, it's tough to make some money. Um, but I think that, you know, I always said to them and. You know, my wife, too, is like, okay, don't let us decide which way you're going to go, right? Our object in grade nine was, okay, we can't pay for your school. <laughs> <laughs> so you either stay here and work or you get a scholarship, right? If you get a scholarship, then it's paid for and, you know, you're, you're debt-free. Plus, you know, um, going in the NCAA system, the, you know, the contacts and alum, it, like, it's crazy. Like, you, it, it's such a network that, you know, opens up a lot of doors, Plus, you're now competing with people that, you know, you would compete against if you went internationally. Right. So here you're a big fish in a small pond. Down there, you're what a little little plankton in, right, in, right. in, a, in a huge <laughs> ocean. So you get used to seeing these guys because they got used to seeing a lot of these guys like, you know, Justin ran with Johan Blake and, and um, Ian ran with uh, uh, Lemaitre, a French sprinter. Right. So you see these guys all the time. So it's not like, like hey, how you doing? As opposed to like, <laughs> right, right. I'm freaking just, out. Just, just so the viewers know who they are, Johan Blake was on the Jamaican track and field yeah, team. Ran with, with, ran with Bolt. He was a 100 meter sprinter. Yeah, 100 meter. And then Lemaitre was. Lemaitre was a, a, um, a, a French sprinter. So he ran the one and the two, but you know, it was, it, he was a white sprinter. So it's like, okay, you got a lot of draw, a lot of. So you know, even I've got pictures with 
all of these guys with these guys. I think, um, uh, you know, we used to take them to New York um, for uh, it was an interscholastic meet. And there, when you look back and you see who was there, it's like, wow, like there was a lot of names that were there that, right. that, that, you know, went on. So you just get used to that and you get used to competitive atmosphere. The one thing, you know, we always stress that it doesn't matter if you lose because they were, the older one was losing more in the beginning. Ian was pretty always, always, you know, always up there, always beating people. But for us, it was like, it doesn't matter who you beat. Are you getting better time-wise, right? Just keep progressing because eventually, you know, you will do, you know, well if you keep putting in the work and doing what you need to do. And, you know, we never stress, like, oh, you lost and this and that. It's like, you know, it didn't really matter. The whole thing was is learning discipline, you know, how to take care of your body. And, and again, this whole thing was um, there was a team of people responsible there. The chiros I know and the physiotherapists I know and the coaches, right, whether it's football, whether it's track, um, and, and the whole gala of people, whole team of people. Um, but I guess we kind of saw them the longest, and we just try to make sure we try and keep them grounded as much as possible and not have this massive head and think they were, they were right. all that. Because I've seen individuals who have never been challenged before in a sense. So they're always used to winning, always used to winning. And then they get beat. They lose a game. Something happens right. and sometimes they don't recover. Sometimes it takes years to recover to realize, okay, okay, you know. Because, oh, you see some of their competitors. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you got to be careful on the winning end. Like when you get to obviously the, 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 the you know, the, the elite level, yeah, that's what it's about, mm -hmm. right? It's no longer a something you do for fun in a sense right, it becomes right. a job it becomes right. your job to compete right and perform like if you go to ncaa system the deal is okay we'll give you an education you run or you play football and you get us some points you win us a national championship right. that's my deal right because they can you know you can for the things and uh bus rides back from the national championships and they say okay all right you're cut you're cut you're cut <laughs> that actually happen yeah and they'll send you home right so if you don't perform to uh you know their liking that's possibility right but again so there's horror stories and there's good stories some make it through and you know but you get your education and and that's the big thing because they spend a lot of money it costs a lot of money to be educated in the states right right you know it's a big difference in here right right so what what was what were some things that you know like you you've seen a lot of parents of, of kids going through sports numerous sports not just track but yeah. as a strength coach i'm yeah. sure you've, you've worked with a lot of different people yeah. um where they're were there certain things that stood out that you might have not agreed with that you thought might have um, prevented that kid from succeeding or prevented them from improving? I've, I've coached kids from a football aspect. I've, I've seen kids from a track aspect or other sports that um, the parent wants it more than the child. Um, <laughs> one of the, I think I may have told you, one of the, uh, one parent told me that yeah this child that's my investment i'm like okay oh like you know the, yeah that's what the really parents yeah. said and things like that because you know like you you if depending how long you you coach somebody and train somebody and you, know, you develop a relationship right mm -hmm. you might see them three four days a week um the kids will often tell you more than they tell their parents it's like uh you know they don't really want to be here <laughs> The kid's satisfied just being on the bench and being on a winning team, not necessarily playing. He just wants to be around the team. And um, there's more pressure on them to succeed, right, and and get to where they think they should be. Um, and that's, that's tough. That's tough for uh, any child, you know, um, to have that kind of pressure because, you know, I've seen, you know, parents take a strip out of their kid for not performing well mm -hmm. or doing something. It's... It's, it's not the time and the place. Like, the kids would come home and um, they would watch the videos, like, just, yeah, videotapes. I don't know if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> They'd watch videos, you know, back and forth, you know, every day, just watch everything and see what how they can improve and be better. The one time I lost it on, on Ian and he was, I think, maybe seven. Seven maybe, years seven, old. maybe seven years old and he just kind of started because we didn't push him into anything it's right. like if you want to play so he'd watch his brother play football come to games and stuff and he'd be off playing and doing his thing mm -hmm. but when he started um you know it was kind of like i think he is a 
attention span. Something happened, right? And I went off <laughs> on him. That was the last time I did because my wife took a strip out of me. <laughs> Don't you ever do that again, right? But it, it's true. And for, for football, when I, when I coach football, most of the parents didn't know that either of them were my kids until later on, right? They're I, on the I, team you coach yeah, as well, though. I've been to, you know, I've seen, I could sometimes identify, okay, that must be that parent's child because either they show them more favoritism or they're really hard on them, right? And it's either way, it's not good because the favoritism part, the kids are like, well, you know what, man, I'm, I'm not going to get to play that position anyways or get any, any love because, you know, that kid's going to get the, the shot. Right. Or too hard on them, then, like, it just makes, you know, things uncomfortable. It's the kids always being reamed out and, you know, it's not good. So they got to develop their own character and stuff like that. And, you know, and I, 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 said, to, I said to Ian most famously, really, he's like, you know, I'll cut you, right? <laughs> he says, yeah, okay. As long as we understand that because, you know, I never put, you know, you have a big name guy come in. I never put a big name guy in just because of his reputation. All that. No, everybody works hard and then the coaches will decide, you know, who's, who's going to be in what position, but you got to work hard. If you don't work hard, then it's next man up. Right, right, right. That's cool. Was there anything that you saw that was a common theme that, um, that, allowed the parent to successfully help their kid grow and, and develop? Was it like a common thing that you saw from you or from another parent or from other other parents that helped their kid really, really maximize their potential? I think the ones that were hands-off in a sense and, and, and um, you know, like we always, it's funny, we would go to track meets and like in football games, stick or thin. I remember I missed one game of Ian's because I was coaching um, uh, another team that was an older team and he was out in the West End, he was out in Burlington and mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't see the game. And that was the one game I was like, oh man, I'm missing the game. And I ended up seeing pictures later on with him, him all, he was tackled so hard and mud bound and everything else. But, you know, we tried to get to, um, yeah, we practically went to everything, you know. For, <laughs> There's a number of years of our lives where every weekend we're traveling and, and stuff like that. And, you know, that, that kind of was our vacation, if you want right. to call it. We were always on the road, but we were always there. So a lot of the kids would would realize, like, oh, we're always there. So, you know, if, if football, like, we'd have bags of gloves because sometimes kids would come with no gloves and stuff. And oh, like, really? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we try and, you know, treat them well and stuff. And um, the kids really resonated to that. And like that, I said, yeah, man, your parents are always here, man. So like, yeah, but we give support to everybody, not just our kids. Right. But, you know, we treat the rest of them like, like it's our kids, right? Because really the responsibility is you're coaching them, you're trying to, um, you know, teach them some skills in a sense and, and just teaching them to be cooperative and how to, you know, thrive in a team environment and how to win but how to lose as well, right? right. You can't take it to heart and just like, I mean, everybody gets disappointed when they lose. Mm -hmm. But can you bounce back up right right shake it off and then go on to your next round and do something else right 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 so how'd you, how'd you support your kid when when they went through through like disappointments uh when let's say they, they go to a meet they go to a game they felt like they didn't perform as well as a kid of like and, and they're obviously a little disappointed in themselves sometimes i would i would expect like how do you support that um the performance end wasn't really like a, a big thing with us so like it, it's funny when you when you grow up in an environment like that, whether it's football, whether it's track, you always have a a family or other people that compete with your family. It's like I didn't care, right, right. I really didn't. Whatever, I like, you know, privately I might say like, you know, you can do this, right? Just teach them a lesson and call it <laughs> me, right? I'm not, you know, but I I I made sure I tried not to be, um, you know, one of those parents, right? It's like I, I just don't like that, so I disappeared. But like nobody knew. I was their father running track either because I, I shaved my head and they had dreads. I didn't right. pull my dread until later. So I could sit in the crowd and nobody knows no, who the no. hell I am, uh -huh. which is fine. Um, but, you know, I just keep my mouth shut. When I'm filming, though, I, I used to film all this stuff. You can hear me on the tape. It's funny. It's These guys play it back and forth, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's it's just like, you know, you see, the, you have a talk, like, depending on what happened, right? I mean... I know a situation where, um, you know, one of them had a fight with a girlfriend and um, when the gun went off, he's still in the blocks. It's like, what the, 
Oh, actually, <laughs> like in an actual knee. <laughs> yeah, and we found out later on that's what happened, right? So the gun went off and he was just just Basically, chilling there. But when when okay, when you say sit on the block, it's like it wasn't a normal reaction time. It wasn't right. normal. It was start. slow. It was like what? The? Yeah, no, that's a yeah, slow. Last out, like oh, oh my gosh. What you, <laughs> so we found out then. It's like, dude, you know what, man? I mean, you gotta you shake it up. You gotta deal with stuff like that. That's life. It right. happens, you know. And there's other instances where um. You know, they get beat. It doesn't matter. It's like, did you run well? Did you get run the time? Or you watch the film. You see that, okay, instead of running through the tape, running through the line, you started to reach, and that right, started you right. slowing down, right? Or football. We've lost some. Like, you know, we've been... <laughs> I hate undefeated seasons and stuff like that because we went undefeated, and the last game, which is a championship game, we lost. Oh, <laughs> That hurts. When you get... When you lose in the, in the early part, it's good because, like, that feeling's like, okay, remember this feeling. You right. don't want it again. Right, and then when you get the championships, it's a different story. You but know yeah. that feeling. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. You you know you don't want to. So, it's really, um, you know, don't be a suck about it in a sense. I know it's a disappointment. Nobody likes to lose. Right. But how can you learn from it? You watch film. You practice better. What are the things we need to practice as coaches? We look at okay, what do we need to take care of? What do we do poorly? Right. Right. Because for me, it's highly competitive, but. I will take the loss and say, okay, it's my fault. I didn't prepare you guys well enough, right? right? right. I'll, I'll do that. And that's just me. Others, it's like, no, I'll blame the team, you know, the, the team, the players, everything else, the refs. Right. Um, but, no, I, I take losses hard in a sense because right. it's like, okay, what what didn't I do? But, you know, so I'll take it for them. But, like, no, listen, we can do this. It's, it's good we lost. We know what we need to work on. Let's, you know, carry it through, see what happens. Right. But losing... You know, if you lose to a, a, a good team, right, or a good sprinter or whatever, a good good athlete, and they're ranked ahead of you and by rights you should lose, uh -huh. but you play your heart out and you give them, like, that's all I want, right? They can blow you out. Like, we've had some blowout games, like, we're just totally outclassed, right? And it's like, there's absolutely nothing we could have done. And there's games when, you know, we're on the other side. We just, you know, straight mollywop people, but... Um, Either way, you know, I, I don't know who said it or what, but if you're having a practice or a game or whatever, I shouldn't really be able to tell, unless I see the scoreboard, whether you're up or down, right? You should be basically on an even keel in a sense, but we're able to turn it on during the plays and, and mm -hmm. come back down to earth in between it. Um, but, you know, sometimes you could see somebody's had a bad round, <laughs> a bad game or a bad race, whatever, they're just so totally, they're, they're out of it. So mm -hmm. the next couple of things they do is not going to be productive. I see. Right? I see. Were your kids pretty good about keeping even? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it was it was part of, I guess, that's part of our personalities too. Like, you don't be a big head. You beat them, that's fine, whatever. But, you know, just, you know, your time's coming. Somebody's going to smoke right, you right. one day. So um, just, you know, take it as you will. And, and you know, the progress was from grade nine on is... Um, you know, make sure your marks are there. And that's the motivational part because when they played the two sports, if they didn't get good marks in one semester or whatever, then you're not playing that sport the next thing. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. So that was the motivation. But the whole idea was, okay, you get all your ducks in a row, run the time you need to qualify, you know, see if any colleges want you and and take from there. So, I mean, that for us was, you know, you, you got your education, Right. That. And, and you know, that's the most part. Now, they were lucky they got, you know, um, to go to international meets, which, you know, it, it's kind of bonus. And, mm -hmm. you know, and they ended up with track careers. And that's, again, bonus as well, right? You know, mm -hmm. so. How did you, how did you blend, you know, like your, your coach and as a, as a dad? Like, how did you blend that? Like, with, actually with... coaching them and dad? Yeah, yeah. Like, let's say, like, after a meet, yeah, for example. Question, let's, 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 say, <laughs> let's say after a meet, right? Let's say, yeah. let's say after a meet, and then they might have, could have performed a little bit better. Like, how do yeah. you balance being a dad? And no, a I mean, the ride coach. home wasn't anything. Like, I, I, you know, known some individuals that ride home, like, they're just getting reamed at. Right. No, it's like, whatever. It's just a race. I mean, it's no big deal. I mean, it's not that, you know, as the race is, it's funny. Um, the videotapes we were talking about, as they got higher and higher, um, you know, in the level of performance, you could actually see my hand shaking. You could see the, oh, really? the camera shaking because 
I'm more nervous. I'm like, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> and, and there's a point where it's like, yeah, I can't tape anymore. That's it. That's funny. <laughs> so done. like, like ten year old Ian is like this, and it's then steady, rock eighteen solid. year old Ian yeah, is yeah, just yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe it was my age. Too. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting older, but yeah, no, you could see you could see the visible shaking, and, and almost if you were one of them, you could kind of the heartbeat through the through the uh, the oh, camera. Really? Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, so yeah, it, it, so you know, you're, you're, you're obviously it's it's your kids competing, and you, you're gonna feel what they feel, but to transfer. Um, what I feel to them is probably not a good thing, of course. right? So you let them deal with it. They come talk to you or ask you or whatever. And then, you know, you just act like normal. But, I mean, you know, they've lost some pretty good ones. Like, you know, like Justin lost the <laughs> lost the bronze medal. Their team lost the bronze medal right. in London. Right. And that was just... That's, know, a, that's a tough loss. Oh, yeah. That was huge. And just know? so people know what that... It was, it was 2012 London yeah. Olympics, yeah. Uh, 4 by 100 yeah. relay, right? Yeah. Yeah. Someone yeah. stepped on the line. Yeah. And, it, and it's one of those things that... Um, based on when you see the times and everything, and they were running well from a relay standpoint, and it was like, dude, you guys could do this, eh? You guys could get a medal based on the time and, and the times are coming out of the heats. So I'm I'm up there, and they have um, so you're you're at the you're at yeah, the stadium yeah, right there watching. But they're they're lane. I believe they're either five or six but right. but they had bolt right next to them they right. had what one is the inside yeah it's the outside yeah. well yeah I, I think were they ahead of them no i think they were behind them so they were lane five and and the makers were lane six which is good like you're in the middle of the track like right, it's right. perfect right i'm like man this is this is so so there are jamaicans are lane six yeah, and then yeah so they would be chasing them so usually you're chasing a faster team. You're, you're gonna, uh, you're so Canadians run. saw Bold yeah. and Johan. And yeah, well Justin's right. I got a couple of pictures of Justin right beside, right, right you know, right side Bolt. Right. On, on the track oh, they're on the same. Yeah. Yeah. Was when they running last. Because they're or? running anchor. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so it it was crazy, but I mean, it, it, it's the kind of thing that you know, it, it it's a good experience because all right. Yeah, life would have changed if you won. Of course. Obviously. But the you know the amount of publicity I guess they got after that and stuff and, and some of my clients you know um, treated him to all kinds of things and the, and the, the reception they got back here coming back to Canada was was pretty pretty awesome man right. like you know it, it was crazy but it was yeah it was one of those like that's a tough loss we walked we walked so we walked over to where the warm up track was and like that was the longest walk probably in my life just thinking like what am I gonna say to this guy <laughs> <laughs> you know and you know what could you say because like, they got stripped of it right away well it took. The problem is it took twenty minutes about twenty minutes because I I was filming it and as soon as they crossed the line I went nuts. But I, I focused on the board and then I I shifted away so fast. I've been trying to see what the time was and everything. I think I have a time written down, but I was like, we're going nuts. So in the crowd, um, there was like, you know, well, of course, there's British all over the place, but, you know, the Jamaicans, um, Americans, and Brazilians, a couple other people. And we're going nuts, and they're like looking at us like, what's your problem? Like, we was like, you know, and we were going crazy. And then they, uh, the board shut off. And we're thinking like, oh, somebody getting disqualified. That's oh, you should, that, that's what happens. because yeah, <laughs> now all of a sudden it's like, no times or nothing. No, I'm like, what is going on? I said, I said to my wife, man, listen, we better, we better just get ready to go just in case, because if the Jamaicans lose, we're done. It's gonna be a riot, <laughs> you know. And then next thing you know, they come out, and so they, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and and DQ down at the bottom. No. I'm like, man, yeah, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And and Justin ran a good leg. Like he came from. It was we look figure about sixth place. To third, really, yeah, eh? It's his best, best leg he's ever yeah, run. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. But he really saved it know, for when it really mattered, eh? Yeah. But you know, I mean, it built character because I mean, of course, you can't, you know, to survive that, come back and kind of bounce back and stuff like that, right? It's, you know, and then the next couple of years, they're really team. They got bronze medals, you know, twice at the world. So, you know, doesn't make up for an Olympic yeah, medal. Right. <laughs> the same team, the same four. It was. No, no, different four, and then the last one I think was with the grass. I see, I see. Um, but yeah, different, different set. But so, what did you say to you, Justin? I mean, you're you're, you're saying well, well, what are you gonna say when you're walking the longest walk you've had to the warm up? I track? mean, we just like yeah, right, man, because we didn't know that they were being interviewed by CBC at that time. 
Oh, so the media was already there. Yeah, yeah. They 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 pull them and say like, you know, how do you feel about all that? And we saw it when we got home because we didn't really see all the footage and everything else. I didn't see it till I got home. Um, but so we didn't realize that. So I guess when you know they're there and they had the reflection time and stuff like that, it was it was uh, time to relax and chill. But I mean, if you see the pictures online, like there's a lot of balling, man. <laughs> I'm sure there was. Yeah, he's yeah. Oh man, <laughs> it was ugly. That's tough. It was ugly. <laughs> it was worse when I came home seeing all that because I didn't see it, right? But right. I guess everybody here once, saw it. Once all the footage came out, you saw everything, eh? That's yeah, tough. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, an experience, though. So. Right. But, I mean, blessed to see, just see an Olympic Games, man. Like, that's, that's like, I've never right. seen it. I would be at the point in time, I think still is probably one of the best run Olympics, you know, ever. The, the London Olympics. Yeah, yeah, it was smooth. Everything was, yeah, it was great. Right, it was right. A good experience. that's amazing. Yep. So how about um? So so I know because uh, they they qualify for Olympics at nationals, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. so so Justin was first. Mm -hmm. Your Ian was second. Yeah. But you didn't even get to run. Like how? Like what? How did <laughs> yeah, you that, deal with that? Was an ugly. I I knew before. Yeah, I was contemplating not going. Right. Right. Because we weren't necessarily gonna go, and then at nationals they said, "Look, two kids qualified. You probably should go." So, you weren't gonna go? No, because you know I'm I'm British, so I know what oh, England looks like. Right, and then, right. but you know, and, and we thought about it when you know some guys convinced us that you know you should go. Right. Man. There are one two at nationals out yeah, here. Yeah, so you should go. So we end up going, but um, when they're in uh, Germany, um, practicing, you know, at relay camp and stuff like that. Yeah, I just knew, like knowing knowing how track works and stuff like that, you know, and you know. He was running well, and Ian was running well, and the splits were good and all that. And but I just, we just, I knew before I got to London right. that he probably wasn't gonna yeah, wasn't, wasn't get to run. run. Yeah, and yeah, a lot of things happened in that. But you know, it's one of those. That's probably you know part of the part of what contributed to Ian kind of packing it in earlier too, saying right. like, yeah, I had enough of this. I like, right. don't want right. to deal with it anymore. Um, but again, it's. A lesson he learned and how to grind right I said like you know what you did your best you tried your best and you know I mean it is what it is right outside of his control really eh? yeah yeah interesting yep yeah. well that's that's tough <laughs> well, <you know. laughs> yeah it, it's it, it was hard kind of you know knowing prior to and you know having talks on the phones like you know just 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 keep your head up man just you know we'll we'll see you in a bit kind of thing and so that was more of the impetus okay we go we can see him and see what's going on with him, you know, and kind of keep your spirits up. But, you know, I mean, that's what it. Do? Yeah. <laughs> what what can you do? Yeah. It's like, that's where, yeah, that's where, uh, you know, the, um, what do you want to call them? The dominant parent would roll in and start chewing, chewing people up and chewing right. head coaches and relay coaches. Like, yeah, it's like, nah, what's that going to do? It's not going to do anything. It's going right. to make it worse. Of course. Right? Of course. You know, so. So, gotta let your kid <laughs> deal with it. You yeah, know? that's cool. So, so as a so so for all the parents out there who who are you know trying to help their kids navigate to, through whatever sport they are playing, like is there like one piece of advice or suggestion you might have for them to to help them increase their likelihood of helping their kid achieve what they want to achieve? See, knowing see yeah. knowing what you know and seeing what you've seen as both a parent. And a coach, and have got have gone through pretty much every single level of of track, dealing with all the coaches at various levels. Like, is there one thing that I think? Well, I guess communication is big between yourself and and, and your kids, and you got to decide, okay, um, you know, what is the what are what what are the goal of this this little endeavor to get a scholarship, to get to high level, to um, you know, you got to figure out what you want to do first and you got to figure out if the child wants that. If right. you want it more than the child, then yeah, you need to kind of step away. But even still, you need to step away because the child has to fight their own battles. They have to compete. They have to go through. I mean, failing is part of life. And mm -hmm. if you don't fail, of course. you're not really going to learn anything, right? Um, but being able to, you don't want to live your life through them. Like you didn't get to a certain level, and you wanna you want them to get to a certain level, um, and don't put pressure on them. Just let them decide. Okay, so what I want to do, and because the football crowd didn't know they ran track, and the track crowd didn't know they ran really? football. Yeah, it was two separate things, and then they found out later on in a sense. Um, but 
you know, they have to really take ownership. And, you know, just Ian wasn't forced to play football or run track. It's like, you know, when you're ready, you go. But, but the deal is, um, if you decide to pick something up that you stick through it through that year, mm -hmm. don't tell me yet, I want to quit. It's like, right. no. It's not happening. You're sticking through it. Your commitment is. And then after that, you can do what you want. Right. Right? But you asked to do this or whatever, so you're going to stick through it. So let them do it and take ownership. And then, you know, in terms of it would teach them how really, um, like Justin being the older one, teach him how to eat properly and take care of himself and all that. And we never force it on the Ian. And then eventually you realize, oh, you know what? I got to do this. I got to do that as well. So let them take ownership of all those pieces together. And then, you know, I remember Justin left his football helmet in the house and we were over playing. And it, I, I could have, it would have taken me, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes to go back and forth. I said, no, you're going to watch the game. <laughs> Never left it again. That's good. <laughs> right? I mean, you got to learn a lesson, right? Did it's he like, understand at the time? Oh, or? No, of course not. Like, oh, how old is he? Oh, man. Maybe 11, 12, I'm not sure. So he's just screaming. He's just screaming in the car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was, he was, he was ugly. But hey, you know, That's never, funny. never happened again. You know, never happened again. So. That's a, that's a critical learning moment in his oh. life, eh? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's cool. That's cool. So one last thing before I forget. Mm -hmm. um, both your kids went to NCAAs, mm -hmm. different schools, but they both went to Division One schools. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was that process like Go from from going to visits and the coaches trying to talk to your kids, talk to you guys. Like how, what was that process like for you guys? Yeah, that started around um, probably Justin's grade 11 when he went to the Scholastic Indoor Meet. And at that point, um, I think he won in grade 12. Yeah, I think he won in grade 12. So That's the meet in New York that yeah, you said yeah. pretty much every top yeah. track. Athletes so he right? won in grade 12, so that got him more looks, and, and then, because there's usually coaches in the audience, and they're, they're looking to recruit, so, you know, he had a couple of looks, and, and um, finally he came down to TCU, so we thought it would have been easier with, with his brother, because he's got a brother in the system, and we thought maybe he'd end up at TCU, but it mm -hmm. never happened. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, so the coach actually um, submitted his name to uh, um a coach that was going to to Iowa State. So, <laughs> funny thing about that is, I think two weeks, two or three weeks before he was going to go there, the coach says, yeah, I'm not going there anymore. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm eh? going to TCU. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's had, Ian's had more of a, a tougher time um, in terms of, like, setbacks and things like that, you know, from the coaching aspect because, you know, coach will come in and say, yeah, I wouldn't have given you a full scholarship. You're not worth it. You're oh. just, so, he had to work hard for for what he got and he ended up you know but it it it, it prepared him for battle in a sense right it got him right. tough right because like all right you're not gonna okay i'm gonna prove you wrong kind of thing and you know and he did um but yeah it was generally making sure yeah the marks are up you know they gotta write their sats <laughs> make sure you get the sats get what you need um and you know keep healthy enough to perform because they both had ugly injuries in a sense um, right. justin in grade 11 and ian in grade going into grade nine and it took Ian you know a, a year or so to learn how to run again oh really <laughs> yeah, eh? from his injury right so they've been through a lot they've been through a lot of stuff and, and people don't always seem or realize the story behind it they think that oh an overnight success is like no it's been a process for <laughs> like yeah. a process yeah. for time years right? yeah like plenty right you know so Lots of, really, lots of rehab, lots of therapy, all kinds of things, doctor right? appointments, all kinds right? of things, right? You know, and um, but you got to stick to it. And, and again, it's always like you know, we'll reevaluate. Do you want to continue to do this? Yeah, all right, okay. Then we're behind you. We're supporting you. If right. you don't, that's fine, right? But it's got to be you, not me, right? Right. It doesn't matter to me, right? You know? Right. So I mean, they glad they look back at it now and they're glad they went. Cause I've asked them. Would you have done that again? Would you <laughs> say, say, yeah, 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 I would have done it again, which, which is good because, I mean, you second guess. Like, even sometimes I think, man, did, should, I, should I have put them through the, gone through the track route? Should they gone football? Should they just let, I, you know, you don't know. You, you're, right. As a parent, you sometimes think, like, what could I have done better or changed or, you know, but. Would you have done anything differently? I, 
I don't know, man. I, it's uh-huh. it's hard to say. I I'm I again my bias is towards football. Right. But I see what. Yeah. Can happen. <laughs> but both their kids yeah. were were happy with how how they did it and. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the bottom line is they got their education paid for. Right, an expensive one too. <laughs> Dog, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, I understand why Americans. I gotta, I gotta get a scholarship. I understand, you know. So sometimes it's funny when you see over here. It's like you guys aren't even paying, getting anywhere close, because it's like, all right, scholarship or healthcare or. Right. So, so even a know. U.S. kid going to a U.S. school is still more expensive. Oh, it's big, but it's it's more. For an international student, so you got to be good more, if they're right. gonna give you right. But it's a lot of money, yeah, hundred thousand right. dollars. So, so, you, so like a New York kid going to a New York university is more expensive than Toronto. Kid oh, going easy. To U of T, oh, eh? yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's not. It's not a joke. It's it's big money. So I can understand. So <laughs> their kind of debt when they finish school, if they had loans and stuff like that. Their kind of debt is like house debt. You know, like. It's ugly. If you right. go four years, if you do your masters and maybe be, yeah, it's, it's it's tough. Right, right. You know? That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Yeah, that. no, no problem. Um, so hopefully that helps uh, anyone who's watching. Um, we're gonna come back for part two, talking about his coaching experiences, um, how he helped his athletes navigate through the through the ranks. Um, so uh, keep an eye on that. But thanks for watching, guys.